My name's Couch Coop, and I think I may have introduced Remnant from the Ashes 1 to a lot of my audience way back in 2019. It was a bit of an anomaly. The game got not too much of a spotlight when it came out, but it shone through. It's a rip-roaring Souls-like with guns, and I think I finished this game more than once, 146 hours, and all of it was done with a group of people. I'm looking at Remnant 2 on my own, strictly offline. Haven't seen too many comparison videos out there. Remnant 1 is over on the left. Now, interesting, it had a patch for the five. 4k and 60 frames per second they then adjusted it again to give it this sort of super sampled targeted 60 it was a strange affair over on the right we can see that there's a lot of similarities with the opening of the original game almost last of us like dystopian old world still visualized in these buildings and structures but the combat is very interesting you can see we've got better particle effects over on the right there just a smoother crisper experience this is truly a current gen Remnant game and it's beautiful. I will say to Remnant from the Ashes 2 fans who have just got to the franchise, go back and play Remnant 1, it's amazing. I've also had the fortune of installing the game without any patches going in before 1.06 and there wasn't any graphic adjustments in the options. Now we have quality, balance and performance. Quite self-explanatory. I went for balance. Apparently it keeps it 60 and pushes that resolution up. It looks a lot better than that 30 frames per second on quality and performance. We need more resolution. Very similar opening to the subway in the original game and you get given some NPC sort of colleagues to muck around with but then it's very much you're out on your own. I went with that hunter class because I wanted that hunting rifle off the bat which is a little bit OP I think but the brawler is the class to go as I've started two characters female and she has an amazing sword and what I can only describe as a bullpup shotgun not before nor since yet for all our manpower Tutorials and introductions are so much more informative, it's taking you straight to Old Man Ford, you're shown around the board and you get given literally your first world to go to. Now I thought they switched out, but they don't. You have switch out on bosses and then you incrementally discover the new worlds or biome. Great to see the rework on the Remnant Stone itself and all these different particles and lighting effects gives this game such a buzz and beautiful look. They kept the panicked protagonist voice, which I love. It certainly says some stuff that you are thinking at that time. And interiors, some of this crystal material, the stone temples, you go into an almost shanty, strange, sort of coral-ridden pirate cave at the beginning. And the ideas are amazing. And I've already seen some absolutely beautiful individual enemies. That is kind of the selling point for me with gunfire games and this particular IP, brilliantly done enemies and bosses and boss fights and that sort of whole Souls-like thing in the background, but you've got guns and amazing mods and bolt-ons to muck around with. My first boss was Legion, and if you don't know, it's a trapped arena with multiple ads and you've got this damn thing at the front and it sends out a wave that if you do not time, is half energy gone. I nearly lost my mind. I'm really going to struggle to solo this game, but what I am noticing off the bat is that they're taking into account on the sort of scaling that I'm on my own and certain things are different and I think there's a lot of easier hit points on enemies, i.e. I don't have a bigger sponge on a lot of the bosses, etc. That will have to be proven in the long run and I will get to the multiplayer with this. Thing is, what a bunch of mates over on Xbox, I don't have an Xbox console but do have Game Pass and that's the mismatch on connection. We'll get it sorted. I am trying to sort of shoot round those alien deers, but they will charge you and knock at least a quarter of your health off. So you run out of sympathy when you're struggling at the end of a level and you get headbutted by 
friggin' extraterrestrial antelope. I also love the idea of them keeping in some of the QTE events, so you do have to do a bit of button mashing to get out of a grab. The flyers on this second section, absolutely amazing, popping out of the undergrowth. I wanna see more corridors and less open spaces. I know that sounds strange, but REM1 really came into its own when very tight, often claustrophobic spaces. <laughs> So weird just doing the Vanquish deep dive for Still Holds Up and that has kept its QTEs in, obviously, and not gonna take them out with an update, but it was strange to see them existing in this game. They're a little bit archaic here and there. Same with Shadow of Mordor, they're bloody everywhere. Again, soloing this guy was not easy. Shrewd managed to get me right down to the wire. Look at my health, the millimeter there, and it was like the last shot of the last clip. Everything was off the wall for that particular fight, but the tension's amazing. It was about 10 to 15 attempts as well. It does have a very snappy auto aim on by default. So when you go for that L2, you will sort of slide over to the nearest enemy. This can be a bit of a nightmare because a lot of the wildlife is actually shootable and sometimes your auto aim will go to that as opposed to a key enemy that you want to kill. Once you've settled in with it all though, the whippiness of those frame rates and just being able to look down your sights and pop off a few very quick shots in either direction at high speed makes you feel really powerful and dodging and getting used to how everything's coming at you and the speeds which have changed a little bit from the original. So it's jumping gaps apparently. <laughs> That put me back so far, so watch out for that. There's like a Pandorum style level where you can jump little bridges and go to different islands, but not all of the gaps are traversable. <laughs> the only way to find out is to throw yourself into the abyss. Check this out, this is the point in the game where I'm like, I may have bitten off more than I can chew with this particular boss setup. <laughs> Also, that balance mode doesn't come without its performance issues. Some of the smaller enemies mixed in with mid-bosses can cause some noticeable frame drops, but again, doesn't detract from the experience. Everything holds together. I'm willing to bet not a single YouTuber has noticed that bird up there nestling in that broken tree, or nesting rather. That's a bit Dark Souls, isn't it? It doesn't come down and attack you. It's not a mini boss as far as I know within the level, but that's definitely worth the sub. We're eight and a half minutes in. There's only 2.3% of you left, which is me watching the video for quality and probably Sean. Michael, Lee, Abs, I know you'll all be getting this. We'll all get it on the same systems at some point, get it worked out. I was just desperate to see this PlayStation 5 version of the game because that's where I first played the original on the Sony side. And I wanna see this 1.06 and this balance mode, which is absolutely awesome. It's similar to the RT mode that you see on GTA. Best of both worlds, no ray tracing obviously, but it's middle ground and perfect. This bullpup is OP. There is a secret electric sidearm within that harp challenge. That was the one thing I kind of disliked was having to input that, read the notes in the book. The game was rip roaring up until that kind of brick wall puzzle for me. So far there's been no major meddling around with switches or spot the difference games. It's pretty down the middle with third person, white knuckle, amazing Souls-like gameplay. Your timing is fortuitous. As you can tell, I'm extremely happy with it. And the nearest thing I can compare this to is maybe playing Generations Monster Hunter over on the Switch and then seeing Monster Hunter World for the first time. The graphical jump isn't that big, but the footstep process and the non-broken setup of not changing too much, but amplifying the good stuff is kind of similar. This is pretty much a perfect sequel. Is it worth soloing? Oof, I don't know about that one. You've got to be one sadistic son of a sod to be able to even come up with the idea, but it is doable for what I've had 15 hours of it. I'm going forward at a decent pace, not getting stuck and working out bosses kind of from a different angle because you haven't got those three support players helping you out. I'm 
also curious to see if they've still got the turret mod or the add-on which allows a gun placement within map and that was very helpful in the first one also an autonomous like green skull that just goes off and delivers damage i've got this madness beacon that i got from legion which is more like blowing in the ear of the enemy so i'm looking forward to up in the ante on that modification level Only time will tell if this makes it through to this year's Got Ye. We've got Space Marine coming up, so it's going to be a bit of a toss-up between them, I think. Online multiplayer will certainly help this game, and the fact that it will or should have a really good end game with re-rolling those worlds and taking it on on hardcore difficulty. All this footage was on Veteran, and there's two more difficulty slots up from that. I will put a playlist to my offline single-player content games within the description of the video and in the comments, and of course, I'll see you down there. Ugh! <gasps>